So in this video, I'm going to talk about some different views about the future of computer architecture. You know, it's a field that's many decades old now, and with uh, the end of Denard scaling, the end of Moore's law, there's been a ton of debate inside the field about where architecture is going to go in the future. And since this is a huge topic, I'm actually not going to take it on myself. And in this video, I'm mostly just going to present some views uh, that are either optimistic or pessimistic by other uh, very accomplished luminaries in the field who've seen it uh, develop over several decades. So the optimistic view, and it's one that I hear a lot and that was reflected by uh, John Hennessy and Dave Patterson, is that we're entering a sort of new golden age for computer architecture. And as this uh, subtitle says, innovations like domain-specific hardware, enhanced security, open instruction sets, and agile chip development will lead the way. And I think one broad way to summarize this optimistic view about the future of architecture is that during the Moore's Law era and the Denard scaling era, we were getting these free effortless gains from uh, physical improvements in semiconductors, and as a result of that, architecture was kind of boring because you just sort of did the same architecture on a different technology every year and got free gains. And now people are going to be willing to experiment with uh, radical new architectures and designs in order to get performance in the post more era. And they point to two directions in this uh, paper, this article. One is removing inefficiencies in general purpose programming languages. So just to quote from them, they say, an interesting research direction concerns whether some of the performance gap can be closed with new compiler technology, possibly assisted by architectural enhancements. Although the challenges in efficiently translating and implementing high-level scripting languages like Python are difficult, the potential gain is enormous. Achieving even 25% of the potential gain could result in Python programs running tens to hundreds of times faster. I'm not sure how much of the uh, improvement in languages like Python would really come from hardware support, um, but it's an interesting concept. The next one is domain-specific accelerators. So again, to quote from uh, this paper, they say a more hardware-centric approach is to design architecture tailored to a specific problem domain and offer significant performance and energy gains for that domain, hence the name domain-specific architectures, a class of processors tailored for a specific domain, programmable and often Turing-complete, but tailored to a specific class of applications. And they go on to point to some uh, emerging examples, things like TPUs for uh, deep learning acceleration. So that's sort of the positive view, which is that there's going to be some new interesting uh, directions. And in the post more era, instead of just building the same kind of boring, bland CPU architecture on better and better transistors, we're going to see um, an explosion of domain-specific architectures and willingness to, accelerate, to uh, experiment with new ways for our hardware and software to collaborate to, perform, to produce higher energy performance. On the other hand, a more pessimistic view comes from uh, Mark Horowitz, who's at Stanford, and in his uh, 2014 IEEE ISSCC <coughs> talk, Computing his Energy Problem, he outlined a little bit more of a pessimistic view about where hardware is going in the future. And uh, I've cut some of the slides out, including this first one, and I'll uh, recap them here. So the gist of it is, if you look over time at processor designs, so every single red point here is a processor design taken from the Stanford CPU database, and if you plot the time when the processor was released versus the power density, so the watts consumed per millimeter squared, it seems to just be going straight up and then right around one watt per millimeter squared, things plateau and suddenly around you know, 2004, 2005-ish, we just got this uh, leveling off and we stopped getting more power per millimeter squared in new designs. And this is really bad news because of course, Power consumption is the energy of a design that a design consumes per second, and you can rewrite that as the energy per operation times the operations performed per second. So in general, we want to improve performance, which is operations performed per second, but we can't increase the left-hand side of the equation, right? Power is not going up anymore because we'd basically melt the chip if it uh, got much hotter. So we want to improve ops per second, but we can't increase power, which means we have to decrease energy per op, which means basically uh, designs are going to be limited by their energy efficiency. And in an era of sort of stagnant CMOS technologies, that means avoiding memory accesses, because when you really break down where uh, the energy per op goes, it's to accessing memory. And that really means you need uh, algorithms with better locality. And so in this vision of the future, uh, CMOS technology is going to stagnate. We're going to be limited in performance by the energy we uh, spend per operation. And the only way to really improve energy per op <coughs> is not so much with architecture, but rather with algorithm design that produces better locality and therefore less uh, or fewer accesses to large high energy memories. 
And that means that really architecture as a field is going to slow down or stall and the performance gains are going to move up and have to be achieved through better algorithm design so that architecture, qua architecture, will actually not be a particularly interesting field. So what do you think is the future of architecture? Uh, it's an interesting topic and it's never been more relevant. So leave a comment down below and let me know whether you believe either of these scenarios or whether you think there's a third or fourth or maybe a fifth way uh, that computer architecture could go in the future. So looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.